So the Joule-Thompson coefficient, it relates how does the temperature change as the pressure changes for an isenthalpic constant entropy process. We, it's very applicable for flow through a throttling device. And so as the flow moves from left to right in a well-insulated device so that there's no heat transfer, there's no shaft work, you uh, do a little control volume analysis around it. True. And if you neglect changes in kinetic and changes in potential energy, then you find that H1 is equal to H2. True? Isenthalpic. But the pressure has significantly changed through the throttling device. The pressure at 1, how is it related to the pressure at 2? Which one's greater? Is the pressure at 1 greater than pressure at 2? Always. Right? Always. And then you say to yourself, what about the temperature 1 and the temperature 2? Is it greater? Is it equal to? Is it less? Which one is it? And it really depends on the Joule-Thompson coefficient. As a background, if this was a flowing, if it was a true ideal gas flowing through the system, can you tell me what is T1 compared to T2? Is T is or think about what is T2? Is T2 lower than T1, equal to T1, or greater than T1 if it's a true ideal gas? And for a true ideal gas, H is a function of temperature only, so it is equal for a true ideal gas. For real substances, <coughs> it's typically often less. T2 is often less. You're coming from understanding or studying refrigeration, true? When you had a pressure drop through that expansion valve, the temperature dropped. But what we can do is approximate this derivative as the final temperature or outlet temperature minus the initial inlet temperature, pressure, pressure, like that. Is that a good approximation of that derivative assuming constant H? Yes, or applicable to constant H. It's such that I can solve to find that T2 is equal to T1 minus mu sub J times P1 minus P2. Did I do the math right? Why did we write it like this? Why did we write P1 minus P2? Because P1 is always greater than P2, isn't it? To force the flow through the, through the throttle, there's, it's not going to happen in any other way. P1 is always greater than P2. All right, so this is positive. And so if the Joule-Thompson coefficient is positive, then this is positive, but you subtract it from T. So T2 is going to be less. T2 is going to be lower than T1. So if the Joule-Thompson coefficient is positive, then T2 is less than T1, true? But for some substances under certain circumstances, the property known as the Joule-Thompson coefficient is negative. When the Joule-Thompson coefficient is negative, then it's warmer when it comes out. Okay? Because if this now is negative right here, then it's a negative of negative that's positive. So, so T2 is greater. Okay? If mu sub J is equal to zero, T2 is equal to T1, and that's for the case of an ideal gas.